mentioned earlier, as friends, uh, Tim and I quickly realized that we had a lot in common. Uh, one was the passion per for performing, but the other was we had a passion for giving back. We both had been involved with World Vision. Uh, I remember one night I was sitting at home on the couch watching TV and I was really bleary-eyed and just flicking through the channels and on came an ad for World Vision. Now I'd seen these ads before and you've probably seen them as well. It, it came on and but for some reason this ad really got to me, really connected with me. It showed child after child crying, crying out for help, hungry and starving, barely clothed. I, I don't know, I was compelled. I, I jumped on the computer and I emailed World Vision explaining who I was and that I just wanted to help in any way I could. Uh, the next day, I went to work and to my high five mates and I explained my night watching the, high, uh, the World Vision ad and how it made me feel. And then I thought, if we work together as a team, we could really make a difference. That we could potentially change the lives of kids all over the world. They gave me a big hug and they said, Stevie, we're in. Which was awesome. And then World Vision called and they made us ambassadors. Ambassadors for World Vision, which I think Tim and I will hold as one of the most noble and honourable things we'll ever achieve in our life. But mm -hmm. Ambassadors for World Vision. It was really special. And, and through that role as ambassadors, we went to the Philippines, which is a country in Asia, and World Vision took us to some of the projects they have over there. Now, one of those projects was a rubbish tip. And in this rubbish tip, they have literally thousands and thousands of children and families living on it living in the rubbish tip. And you know what? Most of the kids there were your age. Now, do you guys like having fun? Yeah. Come on, do you really like having fun? Yeah. Well, you know what? So did these kids. They may have been barely clothed, starving, living in the rubbish tip, but we learned as members of High Five that children, no matter where in the world they're from, no matter how rich or poor, every child deserves the right to have fun. So, as members of High Five, we gave them fun. We sang with them, we danced with them. I mean, you can see the rubbish tip here. It was really confronting. I mean, everyone, hold out your palm. Just everyone hold out their palm. Now, they eat one meal a day, and that one meal is just a palm full of rice. One meal. I've had three meals already today. It's not even the afternoon. They have one meal. So we were moved to tears as we left the rubbish tip that day. And we stood there. And do you remember this, Tim? Yeah, I do. We stood there in a group hug. And we looked each other in the eye. And we said, let's never, ever, ever forget these kids. Let's go back to Australia and let's tell everyone we know about these kids. Let's do everything we can to help change their lives. Now, the very next day we get a call from World Vision and they tell us that our visit to the rubbish tip has furthered the credibility of World Vision with the local government and a proposal that was supposed to take over two years to be approved was approved the very next day after our visit. And do you know what that proposal was? It was for a school in the rubbish tip. And it really warms our heart now to think that for generations to come, literally thousands and thousands of kids in that rubbish tip, just like you, are going to be able to get an education. It's amazing. Just because of our visit. It's amazing the work that World Vision is doing in these areas. And, and it's amazing to think that that all came from one thought. One thought I had when I was sitting at home on my couch watching TV. I mean, one thought. Just imagine what all of you guys could do with just one thought.